Hello and welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. Today we're going to take a look at the undercoating process and the way to lay it down in the right order and then also some of the behind the scenes coatings, interior, trunk, um, engine compartment, things like that. This car has a lot of area that has to be coated with something um, and various things you can use there. We'll take a look at some different samples and also uh, I've got some sample boards made up of different textures and products to do a textured undercoat. And our interior, and then basically a POR 15 here uh, right after sandblasting. Did this earlier in the year, uh, last year, and then we transitioned right near the back here and recently caught this up. And the dashboard we shot early in uh, 2016. This was shot with an epoxy primer coat in March of 2016. And I sanded this up yesterday and I cannot believe how hard this material has cured up. It was, it was so tough to sand, I couldn't believe it. So if you're using an epoxy undercoat primer, you're really gonna be happy with the way that thing sets up. And then also we've got the, the fenders now. These are all done with epoxy and underneath the car. Also, the new front pan area is all caught up. And so what I've done is I shot this and started to scuff it. Did a POR 15 inside the smuggler's box there. That looks pretty nice. That's one of those areas that's just real difficult to spray, even if you're using a uh, HVLP gun, whether it be a cup gun or a gravity feed, you just can't get in there uh, because of the size of it. So you have some constraints. That's why the paintbrush works pretty good with that product. Get down in there and trim it out. It looks really nice. We got to finish scuff sanding that and then uh, finish scuffing the rest of this. So you don't want to you don't want to use this epoxy and then uh, let it set up for too long before you top coat it. In my case it's dead of winter now so I won't be top coating this for another month or two. Um, but it's easiest to sand probably within the first couple weeks. It gets a little bit tougher after that especially if you're going to wait up to eight to ten months to, to sand it. And then also up underneath here, under the fenders. I'm going to roll this car over here in a minute, take a look at the bottom, see how she turned out. I use a, a little bit different painting technology to apply that. Uh, this is a um, hydraulic assisted or an air assisted hydraulic pump. I use this for cabinet finishing. This piece of equipment really is for doing uh, really large areas uh, for fine finish. So you can get a wet on wet look, put down a lot of material and uh, get through a big area and get a nice finish with this type of technology. The reason I use this is not necessarily because of the size, it's because of the type of gun we're using here. This is a uh, uh, HVLP gun, but you notice it doesn't have any kind of a pot attached to it, it's just a line. You can get the same kind of uh, uh, functionality with a handheld uh, HVLP pressure pot gun. So it's real difficult to get up inside these fender areas, up inside here, if you're using a cup gun or a gravity feed. It's just banging into everything. You can't turn around. You can't get inside the fenders like you can with a piece of equipment like that. So if you're doing undercoating, that might be the way to go. It's just get an inexpensive uh, pressure, pressure pot and uh, put it on with that. And then also, um, starting to close in the carport. I'm going to build a real nice spray booth in here and then close this project in as we do a final build to keep it clean, keep the animals out, people out. And I've uh, made up some sample boards here. This is some of the various coatings and products available that I've tried and I wanted to try it on some sample boards first before I uh, put it on the car and commit to it. So let's take a look at these up close and then uh, then we'll roll the car over. What I've used here, this is a really popular brand, it's uh, made by Worth and this is a stone garden. All these undercoatings are, are paintable so you can paint over the top of these. Probably if you're going to uh, color coat it, I would go probably within the first 15 minutes uh, or one hour tops and then uh, put your top coat on. Otherwise you'd have to scuff. 
the texture on this guy, it's not bad. It didn't spray too bad. Um, toughness, I'm going to give it maybe a 7 to 8 out of 10. You know, it would scratch, and the scratching would be permanent. And then this is a different, uh, this is the high build. And it really didn't look that much different, you can see here. And the stone guard. And honestly, they really didn't spray that great out of the can. Didn't get a very wide pattern. And uh, a little bit blotchy to look at. So if you're spraying this product out of a can, I'm not sure you're going to get a really, really high quality look, especially if it's a big area. And over here, uh, this is a product I've used before. Had really good results with it. Um, this is a undercoating by Evercoat. Let's meet these guys here. And this one is a lot tougher, a lot harder, and a lot more resilient than the Worth brand. And spray is a lot better. And uh, I would depend on that more for durability than I would this one here. Also, you can see you can get the, depending on how far away or how close you hold that can, you can get a real nice pattern out of it. This is the gas tank. I'm going to do a base coat, clear coat on top of this. I use this one because this one's just, it's just really tough. And that's what we want. We're going to be setting tires on here, pulling them in and out. I want something that's going to be fairly hard. So this one straight up is pretty good. But none of these really have the look that I was after to do this car. Um, what I'm trying to get at is a texture that's fairly close to Porsche's original texture, uh, but more of a refined look. And this is what I come up with. This is a product made by Pran uh, Transtar. And straight up, it's kind of a flat finish, but real nice texture, real even, uh, sprays really nice. Not as tough as the Evercoat or the Worth, but uh, beautiful spray pattern and the, the right... Um, sheen. So then what I did is I, I put a urethane top coat on it and what that's going to do, that's going to give me the ability to have a washable undercoat. problem with all these undercoatings straight up is they're not really washable. So once you put it on there, that's the best it's going to look is day one and it's only going to go downhill from there. I tried some POR15 top coating on some of them and uh, that turned out terrible. That's, that's just not going to work. So uh, POR15 on top of an undercoating, you can see here, it just it just self-levels. It, it uh, loses its texture and uh, just really gets away from that, that nice smooth look that you want. One of the things I want to do on this car is I don't want to diminish or take away uh, some of the authenticity of how it was built. And I really like to see all these uh, rivets, spot welds, and body details. If I cake this stuff on here, it's just going to go away. So really what I want to do is I want to put a nice finish coat on there, a durable coat, and, uh, and still be able to retain and see how this car was put together. I think there's some beauty in that. Uh, sometimes you see some of these restorations are a little bit too smooth, a little bit too clean and you lose something there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the Transtar and then I'm going to top coat it with a matte finish urethane 2K top coat which is a two component um, basically a matte finish clear coat like they would put on the outside of a car it's like the high gloss only it's a matte finish and that's going to go uh, underneath in the fenders uh, inside the trunk and also the engine compartment see here I shot this 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 was uh, had some pitting in it uh, fairly aggressive pitting and uh, this Transtar just cleaned it right up probably put one more coat on there and then top coat it with my with my matte finish and that's just gonna come up beautiful that's gonna be a nice look for this car okay let's uh, let's roll this guy over and take a look at the bottom side okay we got it rolled over here you see our pan turned out pretty clean once we started getting a coating on there. can almost not tell we did any modifications there. Smooth out our joints. The wells look pretty good. And then I used a seam sealer in some of these areas and tightened it all up and painted over the top of it with the epoxy. 
and then scuffed on top of that. That should keep it nice and tight, sealed up. And uh, keep the water out, not that this car will ever see any water. Um, no water out and any kind of vibration that might be taking place. And then also fix all the dents in the pan. You can see here where the dolly uh, had, the, had the paint on there. It was still a little bit wet when I set it on the dolly. I had to make some modifications to the dolly as it was, uh, once I pulled those dents out, it's actually touching. It actually has some slight radiuses to them. Um, so here's what I did with the dolly. I notched this center area out much wider so we don't have any kind of uh, area touching at all. And then put some carpet padding down and some rubberized uh, pad on top of that to get a little bit of traction so the car doesn't slide on the carpet. You need to be pushing on the dolly and the car slide off. That would not be fun, especially at this stage of the game. So there it is all undercoated. You want to probably do this first. You don't want to move on to the second part of it, which would be the texture and clear coat. I would wait until after the color goes down and then I would do this uh, second. And the reason you want to do that is because we still have to wet sand this car and that's going to be really, really messy. You know, wet sanding and all that dust and grime uh, is going to get down in those nooks and crannies and pores and kind of ruin your, your nice jet black finish on there. Um, if you do this after the fact, then um, it's always going to be clean. You don't have to get in there and try and clean it out. So that's why I'm going to hold off until after the finish paint goes on to do the texture. Okay, so I had a question from a new viewer, Patrick, in Scotland. Patrick has a Porsche 996. Um, his question was, what do I think about undercoating and, and what to do? What are the options in salt road conditions? Um, 996 is more of a modern car. It's going to have a much better rust treatment from the factory. They would have dipped those cars. Um, so metal condition is probably going to be much, much better than anything of the earlier models. However, uh, that, that salt can still wreak havoc on your finish. If I had a modern car and I was driving it in salt conditions, uh, I think what I would do, here's some rust converter here. Uh, this is what I used up in the fenders. Um, I would rust convert the, the bottom of the car and get it up on a hoist. A good look at everything. Uh, I would first power wash it. Probably do it on a warm, dry summer day. Power wash it really good. Try and get that salt out of there. And then I would shoot the rust converter on everything I could see. I would soak that thing really, really good and let the rust converter do its thing. That stuff does work wonders. It really, really does work. Um, once I have my conversion and rust is no longer the problem, um, I think I would spray. There's a product called Fluid Film which is basically a, it's almost like an oil type membrane. You just soak the bottom of the car. Um, you can soak uh, engine compartment, your door jams, any of those areas where it's gonna take some of that salt in there and just start eroding things away. It just keeps a film on there and it's not really permanent. So you're not really trying to shoot a bunch of undercoating on something or trap something in. You got uh, water and salt already in there. The problem with trying to undercoat on something that already has an undercoating on it is you may actually trap it inside and create a bigger problem. So I would do a, a real good cleaning, uh, do a rust converter to get off any visible rust in the nooks and crannies, soak it really good, and then shoot something like a fluid film on there. I hope that works out for you, Patrick. And good luck with that. Let us know what you end up doing. Anybody else got any ideas on that? Uh, maybe you can make some uh, comments on the comment section below. Okay, guys, uh, from here, I'm going to uh, do the final sanding, uh, do a final mock-up, and then uh, we're going to get ready for paint. My target is late February. Uh, I'm going to try and take advantage of weather temperature conditions and uh, work conditions. Work's always a problem. But... Uh, Hopefully we'll target for that and we'll get this car mocked up and we'll do a video on the final sanding process and final mock-up. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.